Welcome to the Secret Dungeon. Today, Halloween, we're covering the Secret World. This game covers some new genres for the show, as this is an MMORPG with some alternate reality games also. Yeah, that's a game genre. It's not as cool as it sounds, though. So this game is all about fighting eldritch horrors, investigating conspiracies. A simplification would be to just call this X-Files Universe, but with less aliens, more evil. You start off the game and you get to choose between three different factions. I'll just simplify this for you a little bit. Yeah, there we go. The Illuminati in this game are basically a Hollywoodized version of corporate America, essentially acting in a sociopathic way as a means of acquiring money and power. Except they deal with all sorts of supernatural forces and blackmail instead of just stock shares. I personally think that the real-world equivalent of forces like this affect us way too much as it is, and even though this is just a parody, this portrayal hit a little too close to home for me. Talking with this lady for five minutes made me want to burn this facility to the ground. Aim high and achieve even higher. It's not just in your best interest, it reflects on me too, and that is super important. Make me look bad, I'll mount your head on my wall as an object lesson to the next fuck-up. But if you've ever wanted to work at Comcast, Verizon, Bank of America, or hey, Electronic Arts, you may enjoy this faction. And you may be feeling some discomfort from the microchip that I grafted to your spinal column. And as your doctor, I'd caution you, strongly caution you, don't try removing it, okay? But me, I couldn't handle it. I had to join another one. Now the Dragon Faction is essentially a group that sees itself as chaos theory in action. By manipulating events in the right ways at the right times, it leads to some sort of grander goal that they have insight about? Well, I can totally respect looking at the big, big picture of everything, but I'm not convinced that's what's actually happening here. This game has demons rising up out of hell. It has Lovecraft monsters overrunning towns. So both Hell and Cthulhu are a force at work in this world. To me, that changes everything. You're going to try and outsmart the Elder Gods with your master plan? You think you're going to out-chaos Cthulhu? I don't think so. You guys don't know what you're doing. You think you do, but you don't. So this clearly pushed me towards the final faction, the Templars. They're your old world, fight against the darkness secret society. You came to us in search of a purpose. Yeah! And mark this, there is no purpose greater than ours. Yeah! Now, I don't always like to play as a goody two-shoes in RPGs, but when what you're fighting looks like this, or this, and we could be losing, then yeah, we need to stop screwing around. Support your local Templars. So once you've joined the Templars, you make a character, and then you start the game. The short version here is you're one of the X-Men and have special powers, except less defined. So the secret society of your choice has come to recruit you. You're also having dark visions about the world ending, but don't worry about that. Now I've pulled this trick on you once before, so I may as well get this out of the way. Yes, this is an online game, and yes, this was published, though not developed, by Electronic Arts. But unlike some games, at the time of this video, you can still play this game and they're not shutting it down tomorrow. Now, after what EA did to Battleforge, you might think I'm a hypocrite giving money to EA for yet another online-only game. And you would have a point. All I can say is, I tried. I'm normally not really into MMORPGs for a few reasons. I love exploring the worlds, but tend to not like the combat or piecemeal story approach. I've tried a few of the free ones for a few hours, but that's about the extent of my MMO playing. So when The Secret World came out a few years ago and had a subscription fee, I didn't even look at it. But of course, not long after the game came out, they dropped their subscription fee. But it was an MMO, still pricier than what I normally pay, so I didn't think much of it. But over time, I would keep reading about it, and the game kept dropping all these buzzwords and phrases on me. It's like they were trying to check off every box to entice me into playing it. But the review that finally pushed me over the edge was this guy. Shadoza. It was just this one sentence. Currently, I am undecided on whether I love the game or hate it. And this is coming from someone with 2,873 hours on record, 77 hours in the past two weeks. That's almost a full-time job. 
As my friend put it, he doesn't know whether he loves it or hates it, and apparently he has to be really damn sure. So when it went on sale, marked down a bunch, yeah, I finally caved and had to try it out. Again, I'm not against online-only games, just the killing them part. So did it change my mind about MMORPGs? Well, let's find out. Once you get out of the cutscenes, you get to explore the city, which is London. Now, if you join the different faction, you'll have a different home city, but I tried to explain earlier that you should have joined the Templars. Now, something else I want to mention is that this is kind of a mainstream game, so I'm adopting a new policy on that. While I won't leave you in the dark, this isn't going to be a thorough review. There are other, more objective reviews out there, and I mostly agree with them. Although some of them are delivered so dispassionately, I don't blame you for not wanting to watch them. Physical proximity comes into play on occasion, but while it's no, engaging, say it like it's you mean it. Abilities do tend to play off each Put other. Put some in heart ways, into so it. Exploring various skill combinations can be fun. Yeah. It can take a while to do. Anyway, my point is, if you want a full review, go find another one. I don't care about tier five crafting. And hey, because this is going up on Halloween, I'm gonna give you the Halloween tour. Because despite the initial appearance, this is actually one of the best Halloween games I've seen. See, look, we have a skeleton, another pumpkin mask, a Freddy Krueger looking pumpkin, a chipmunk with an assault rifle, Anubis, some dude bro. I guess that's his girlfriend there. Actually, even when it's not Halloween, this game has some fashion pioneers in it. Now this game is not the scariest. I was hoping to have something scarier this year, but this episode had to be this year. I'll explain later. All right, since I'm in the driver's seat, we're gonna focus on what's important. And that's this guy. Look at this guy. All right, game. Good job. We're starting off strong with a guy dressed like this, putting on a puppet show, telling us how we're all going to die. You don't have to take his word for it. I am so down with this. This guy knows I am too. So he gives me a vision of what the future will look like if you buy the DLC. Then I wake up on the street while some lady was trying to pickpocket me, and then it's off to see more of London and the Templars. This concept of Templars organizing to fight demons reminds me a little bit of Hellgate London, except I guess this would be a much better prequel. By the way, developers, don't feel like the concept of London Templars fighting demons is overdone. That market is far from saturated. You can keep those kinds of games coming. So after wandering around, you get acquainted with your handler and then get sent to combat training. Now, the combat in this game... No, not yet. We're having such a nice time in London so far, let's not ruin it. So after combat training, you get your first assignment to go clean up this town in New England, where something is going on, so we're going to go and find out what that is. So here we are in New England. Actually, it wasn't quite that simple, but it may as well have been. In this game, the myth of Hollow Earth is real. So the idea is you just walk inside the Earth to get to different locations around the globe. Well, that sounds nice, but I'm not sure I buy it. We're traveling from London to Maine, which is about 3,000 miles. Now, if we had a straight path through the Earth, that would save us some time. But I did some math, and it only comes out to about 75 miles less than if we were going across land. That's not worth it. We should have taken a plane. Distance and time bend in here. Why, you can cross the globe in a brisk walk. Now, of course, it's perfectly safe. And no one's entirely sure how it works. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Magic Fantasy Conductor. The sheer number of cutscenes in this game is really impressive. I want to say there are hours worth of cutscenes like this. They're all great, although the lip sync can get god awful. Look at this guy, he's out of sync. Community on the New England coast dropped off the map. You can disregard the tiresome government cover-ups. There are- Or her. The boys on the cordons haven't been briefed. As far as they're concerned, this is all just heightened awareness after the terrorist attack in Tokyo. Ra 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 ra. This is a minor thing though. My experience with MMOs prior to this has always just been some text block telling you what to do. And it's easy to not care at all. Like it's just some shopping list. So even if they talk like Muppets, these cutscenes do a whole lot to draw me in. So our first contact is a cowboy who just happens to be hanging out to greet you in the middle of a zombie apocalypse around his unprotected campfire. 
Let's listen to him and count off how many folksy puns he forces into what little dialogue he has. Got your southern welcome right here. Mesquite beans, Texas style. Good ought to face evil on a full stomach. Name's Boone. I'm a troubleshooter. You and I need to have a powwow before you continue your little crusade. You Templars may be taking the high road, but just watch you don't get saddle rash from the high horse, okay? This ain't my first rodeo. I know we're gonna need all the unity we can get. Don't mean to say you stepped into hell, but when the wind blows west, you can just about smell the brimstone. Wow. It's like the actor is trying to upstage himself. Also, if this guy's voice sounds familiar, that's because he's only been in a billion movies, shows, or games. This is a pretty good example of the writing in The Secret World. Some of it is clever, and some of it will be corny to the point where it's not possible to do this by accident, so it becomes this black hole of corniness that implodes on itself. I've spent nights in houses so filled with spirits I had to perform exorcisms to take a dump. If you like the writing in Max Payne, I think you'll like the writing in this game. So this town, Kingsmouth, which is a play on words from Kingsport and Innsmouth from H.P. Lovecraft lore, is overrun by zombies and just about everything else you can imagine. In fact, the names in this town border on ridiculous. Arkham Avenue, Lovecraft Lane, Elm Street, Belmont Avenue, Poe Cove, Dunwich Road, Dagon Bay, Miskatonic Bridge, Sasqua Pond, Kraken Point, Skull Island. Wow, I guess we know what some of the influences are. Anyway, for now, we have zombies. And amazingly, this is not Romero Road. So if we accept our first quest, it involves combat, so, uh... Moving along, we come to a small police station that's holding up against the zombie menace. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little bit of Resident Evil 2 or 3 vibe here. I mean, we're not in the city, but other than that, it feels similar. Here we have a folksy sheriff. I'm Sheriff Bannerman, and this down-home little state of emergency is what's left of my jurisdiction. A folksy deputy. I'm sure I'll get in a heap help in the darkness now, eh? A zen biker demolitions expert. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, my friend. I got plenty of experience blowing shit up. Even though they sometimes go a little over the top, I feel like every single character in this game has real personality. I can't tell you what a relief that is compared to a lot of other RPGs I've played. I've always felt like what's the point of even writing a character if there's not something interesting about them? Also, in addition to the animated cutscenes, you can talk with almost every character about different topics and get spoken dialogue as well. They usually have a lot to say on a topic too, so you may have to click on each of these topics multiple times to hear everything. So this game is absolutely jam-packed with narrative. There's more dialogue and story in this game than a lot of single-player games I've seen. Okay, we're about ready to start the Halloween tour because this place is Spooky Town, USA. But that means we're gonna have to go out into the wild here, which means things could get hairy and we'll have to engage in combat. So... Let's talk about the music. The music in Secret World falls into two basic categories. Some generic and forgettable tracks that aren't especially good. Or else really nice themes for important areas or events. I didn't realize how good they were right away. They sort of crept in. So they're insidiously good. There's also some fan submitted music they added from a contest a while back. But you only hear those in places that have a radio or at a club. And like almost every MMO on the planet, there's not enough music to go around because you'll be dumping too many hours into it. So a mixed bag, but what's good is really good. All right, time to start the Halloween tour. So don't let the zombies feasting on corpses deter you or the bloodstains or the dismemberments. If you head out, we can see Halloween decorations all over the place. Look at the jack-o'-lanterns. We have some decorative ghosts. Man, this town is pumpkin crazy. It's awesome. I like how it's not just one house with a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns, it's everywhere. 
You'd think even without all the monsters, this would be the best place to celebrate Halloween in the country. You could fill a U-Haul with the candy you would get here. It's kind of a shame the monsters are here, actually. What happened was a mysterious fog came to this coastal town that just made everyone want to get up and walk out to the sea, where they all turned into horrendous sea monsters here. So in case this game isn't Lovecraft enough for you yet, we're having a nice taste of the shadow over Innsmouth here. Speaking of Lovecraft, this game cannot pile it on hard enough. Dunwich Paper Shop? HP Arts and Crafts? Oh no, we're under attack! I knew this was gonna happen! Okay, fine, let's talk about the combat. Damn it. God, where to start? In this game, you have two primary weapons at any given time. Swords, pistols, shotguns, different kinds of magic. The system they use here is where you build up combo points that build off another, then you release them for a more powerful attack. It's actually very complex and intricate, so if you're the sort of person who really likes to optimize your build, you'll have fun here. Even I was checking sites and doing research on this to try to get more of an edge with my build. So what are the best weapons to pick? Well, after spending a lot of time with this, I'm reminded of a quote from the movie Full Metal Jacket. You are all equally worthless! Now this game likes to make a big deal how you can swap your skills in and out to customize the character. And that's an awesome concept, but the damage on everything is pathetic. Now again, I'm not a big MMO guy. But even for other games, I tend to hate turn-based combat. I don't like slow combat unless there's a good reason for it. Like you're pinned down, or your leg is broken. If we're fighting, let's fight, huh? Well, this attitude is not popular among MMOs, and the secret world is no exception. Here's me attacking one zombie, the easiest enemy in the game. Gee, that's taking quite a few chops, isn't it? But this is nothing. Let's find a moderate enemy, one of these sea monsters. Do you see how long this is taking? Now this isn't a very optimized build, but it's not an awful one to start with. But here, take a look at an unoptimized build. Good God. Now you might think as you unlock more abilities, you can really dish out the damage. Well, sort of. You might have one ability that'll take half their life, but then it takes 30 seconds to recharge to do it again. For somebody like me, spoiled by action-adventure games, this is such a waste of time. How about if the enemy just died when I shoot him point-blank with a shotgun? I'd like that. I'm not saying make it too easy. Maybe I wouldn't be able to just stand here like nothing matters when zombies are trying to tear me apart. I just want to cut the shit and kill or be killed, not have an extended slap fight. Now, if you're used to MMORPGs, this is nothing new. I get it. The idea is you're supposed to be playing with multiple people so that the enemies go down fast when you're with a group. But the secret world is kind of a special case. We'll come back to that. Even though I still don't like it, I actually have more respect for turn-based combat than whatever this is. Cooldown combat? Because good turn-based combat at least involves a lot of tactics and thought to it. Whereas this is just fighting with time-delayed water pistols. As a friend of mine once said, if an M4 in a game is a bad weapon, then the game is wrong. And it doesn't get better later. The enemies either stay the same or they get even tougher. I practically stopped looking at these things as enemies. More like aggressive tree stumps I had to hack apart slowly. So instead of a heroic Templar, imagine yourself as just some badass lumberjack. Although if I know my audience, a lot of you don't even have to imagine. Just chopping away. I'm sure there'll be a lot of MMO fans who disagree with me, but I think this combat style is bullshit. It feels like it's just there to slow you down from rushing through the game too fast. And you know what? I think the game knows it too. In one mission later on, you get to use a chainsaw to cut apart some zombies. Look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. One swing is killing the weaker enemies, plus I can swing it as fast as I'm able to for the tougher ones. I don't have to wait five seconds to swing it again. Not even the most optimized build is going to get me anything close to this. The game is just teasing me now. So yeah, I hate the combat to this game, which is a big problem since that's easily half the game or more just going around hacking up monsters. But hot 
damn, the rest of this game? Well, there's a reason this is the Halloween episode. And now that you know the story on combat, I'm going to switch over to my more developed character, Smacky Cakes. So if the combat starts to look not so bad, it's because him fighting in this early area is the equivalent of picking a fight with third graders. It took a lot of long, awful grinding like what you saw earlier to get to this point. Anyway, it's Halloween! Let's find some spooky stuff! So besides pumpkins and zombies, we of course have a creepy cemetery, also with zombies. One thing that's interesting is when you examine one of the bodies that the zombies were feeding on earlier, then... Moving on, look at this tree. Is this not one of the most Halloween trees you've ever seen? I bet they used to hang people every week from this tree. Hey, I promised golems. Well, if we head over to the junkyard, that's exactly what we have. Now, I was complaining about the combat, but if the game said that one of these could kill me in one hit, yeah, I could see that. Hmm, coal miner zombies in the forest taking a swing at me. Feeling a little bit of Alan Wake here. Although I can run a lot better. I like the reverend that runs the church here, and not just because of how he dresses. Even though this guy is Illuminati, I like him because he's old school Illuminati. So instead of power, he's more concerned about truth and overly complicated puzzles. You know how Republicans and Democrats don't really resemble at all what they started out as? Well, the same is true of the Illuminati. Now it's a good time to talk about another element to the secret world. Alternate reality games. I thought these died off back in the 90s, but apparently not. For those that don't know, alternate reality games are ones that bleed over into the real world a little bit. So say you find a phone number written on a wall in a game. In an alternate reality game, you could actually call that number and there would be a clue about the game or something. Well, the secret world does that with fake websites, clues you have to go online to research, and so on. I have issues with these for two reasons. Allow me to illustrate why. So I take this mission and I'm given a clue here. Follow the Illuminati symbols. Ah, it's the manhole covers. I actually noticed those earlier, but didn't think to follow up on them. So these are pointing in the direction I should be going. This is very cool. It's a hidden message in plain sight. Classic Illuminati. So I follow these manholes for a while, then I come to an end. Aha, another clue. This plaque says, in the seat of power, the navigator immortalized, illuminating the path to the sleeping priest in Fletcher. Well, there's a priest island in Fletcher Bay. I don't completely get this one, but the seat of power might be the town hall? That's right here, and I saw it earlier, so let's check that out. Again, I like this. It's rewarding you for paying attention to the details you might have seen earlier. Once I get here, I'm apparently supposed to pick a painting. There are multiple clues here that are red herrings that can take you to dead ends. I don't like that. But finally, I pick the right painting, then I get my next clue. Time is the province of kings and gods. The hand of time points to the truths written by kings in the words of gods. The path is open to the enlightened. Well guys, I'm not feeling very enlightened. I have no idea. Something about time, I got that much. So I finally had to look at a walkthrough, and here's what they said. Your first keyword is time. Look up above the doorway leading to the stairs in the town hall and you'll see a clock. It says 1010. Damn, I didn't even see that. How about giving me a light source then? Secondly, the words of God refer to the Bible. Kings refer to either the book One Kings or Two Kings. Googling yields something that isn't really relevant, but if you look at One Kings 1010, it will say, and she gave the king an 120 talents of gold. So your clue is 120. Also key is that Sheba, referenced in the passage, brought the gold to King Solomon. Coincidentally, Solomon Priest is the founder of Kingsmouth. Go to his house, besides the church, and head to the back where you'll find a cellar. Enter the code 120 to enter the cellar. Okay guys, I don't know if I can do the same expression I made when I first read that, but you know that I am disappoint guy? Well, that's how I felt about this. So pretend that's me. Okay, the clock was my bad, but the rest of this, no. The jumps they're expecting me to make are way too abstract. How do I know the words of God don't mean those numbers back at the church? Or some clue the reverend said in his dialogue? 
The person writing the walkthrough even got the wrong passage from the Bible initially. Listen, I like puzzles, but I'm not one of the lone gunmen. And they get worse than this. If you locked me in a cell, I might eventually get this one. But some of these others, I would never, ever guess, ever. And this is the problem with almost all of these alternate reality games. They require shot in the dark after shot in the dark with only the flimsiest of connections. You're more likely to correctly predict the release date of Half-Life 3 than you are to guess most of these puzzles. In this entire island, I only managed to solve two on my own. The rest, I had to cheat, and not even a little bit. And that brings us to the second problem. Some of these, you have to go online to get more clues. I know that's the genre, but I see that as a failure of the puzzle. Because this isn't the 90s anymore. Once you're online, it's too easy to just look up the damn answer to the puzzle instead. If I don't have to touch a web browser and can clearly figure out the puzzle from the information given, great. But as soon as you're sending me to Google, game over. Speaking of which, I like how the Reverend actually mentions Google. Forums, forums that don't show up on Google. It's a small thing, but it's refreshing to hear real-world references in a contemporary game. It makes the experience more real. Okay, back to the tour. It's the zombie bridge. Don't wake the zombies. Don't wake the zombies! Oh no, we woke them! Yeah, this totally isn't the Evil Dead cabin or anything. This is also named Ash Forest. Get it? And we have Bigfoot, because why not? Now, I was mistaken when I mentioned there was a witch in this episode. I remembered this lady being a witch, but she's just a fortune teller instead. Not that there's much of a difference. Her backstory is pretty cool. Remember how everyone who got touched by the fog walked out into the ocean? Well, she would have, except she was literally tied up during an S&M sex session, so she was restrained until it all blew over. She also fakes her fortune-telling accent. Once again, guys, this is how you make an RPG great. Give your characters personality. Anyway, she's having trippy visions of a raven, so since you're part of the Supernatural Detective Club, you're on the case. This mission was a lot of fun. You get to chase down these ravens from their flight paths, and then they lead you to a revenant who is causing the psychic disturbance. Also, maybe it's just me, but this playground area reminds me a little bit of sanitarium visually. And hey, I ended up finding a witch anyway, so we're good. Next, we have a poltergeist. Although all it does is annoy you, really. Very true to life. Here's some sort of oil spill, but it's been classified as safe by the EPA, so nothing to worry about. Hey, it's a ghost conductor! This guy's going to be roaming the Earth a long time. We've shut down a bunch of railways in the US. Sorry, ghost conductor. And I am glad to give this game my seal of approval as it has a haunted amusement park. Although I have to dock points because whenever you enter inside it, it distorts the screen and gives you some light static. When I played this, I remember wishing I could see more of it clearly. Well, it looks like I'm going to get my wish, as Funcom has decided to make a prequel single-player game to this called The Park. And it uses the exact same assets. Now, I'm sure I'll play that at some point, and I totally approve of repurposing your assets towards something fresh, but I think in this case, it might be the sign of something darker at work. I'll come back to that. I'm not sure what's going on here. I doubt it's legal. Welcome, partner, to Wendigo Ranch! Yeehaw! This decaying gothic mansion reminds me a little bit of the Black Mirror. Okay, maybe not that part. This is maybe the second creepiest part of the game. The audio really builds up the tension for this. It's probably ruined by their heavy-handed approach to the ghost, but you can tell they were trying. Oh, this is some bullshit here. I guess I can't get too mad because it is a ghost attacking me, but rub it in, why don't you? Now coming back to alternate reality games and conspiracies for a second, you might think I'm making this up, but while I was playing this game, I started to notice a certain graffiti pop up where I lived. TSW. Hmm, the secret world? The more I looked around, the more it seemed to come up. If I were to plug their locations in on a map, would it give me a clue? Was it a stealth marketing campaign by EA? I mean, surely it's not just some dumb shit tagger putting his initials because he doesn't have any actual graffiti art talent, is it? We may never know. 
I don't know if we should buy pumpkins from this lady. What do you think? I think they're a little pricey. Yeah, nobody was ever sacrificed here. I'm sure of it. Well, I promised some cultists in this episode, and here we are. They survived the fog because they had their magic runes protecting them. The Morning Light. Yeah, that's totally not a cult name. And of course one of the followers is named Moonbeam. I like their leader here. We're disciples of doom, but change won't happen unless we up and act. Sure, Rome wasn't built in a single day, but it sure as hell wasn't built by deadbeat procrastinators lazing around on their asses smoking weed, either. Truer words were never spoken. This guy doesn't need my help. Looks like he has things under control to me. And we have another nice side attraction of a writer holed up in a lighthouse where all he does is write, get drunk, snipe zombies, and take pot shots at anyone else who gets too close. Every day it's the same thing. Drink, shoot, ride, ride, shoot, drink. Like a hamster on a wheel. Living the dream. This place is cool, Innsmouth Academy. Gee, I wonder where they came up with that name. Anyway, this place is for Illuminati pupils, and it's basically Hogwarts for the occult. You have students trying to raise the dead, summon demons, practice death curses, basically all the stuff they don't want you to do in the Harry Potter books. The grounds are absolutely infested with spirits, and whatever these are. Uh, running around here kind of reminds me of the game Obscure. Also, one of my favorite characters is here. The headmaster has this real obsessive compulsive vibe about him. A thorough investigation will follow as soon as we have appointed new staff and dissolved their predecessors' corpses. Also, I find it hilarious that he has latex gloves on at all times. Great. We'll have a sacrificial donation drive. Or a bake sale. Delightful. This does not look good, guys. I don't think Santa Claus is coming to town this year. Oh, and hey, remember not to think about this guy when you go to sleep tonight. You'll be glad you didn't. Here are some more pumpkins, in case you need another fix. And if that's still not enough for you, then we have the Pumpkin King! I think this one is a little scarier than the Tim Burton one. Aw oh, hell, he's dropping pumpkin bombs! This is getting real, folks! Ladies! And it's nice to see the gorilla from Resident Evil 4 getting some work here, too. FIRE! Okay, I said the haunted house was the second scariest part, so let's get to the scariest. For me, the creepiest part was the boogeyman. Or they call him the bogeyman, but whatever. First, you have to enter this dream world state in order to find him. This is giving me a little bit of a Silent Hill 3 vibe. When you find him, he keeps running from you like a creepy upright bug. Then when you see him up close... Yeah, 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 yeah. And to wrap up this tour, you got a taste earlier, Hell Demons. The Hotel from Hell. We have damned souls, a succubus, no, excuse me, a consecratrix. That's funny. I bet a Catholic came up with this one. This is actually an early mid-game section, but come on, look at this. This looks like an end game hell night. Because how are you gonna top a hell dimension pouring into Earth? I mean, this game also has forces of Cthulhu, so Cthulhu versus hell might be a pretty good versus battle. But this here alone is good enough for a game in itself. I mean, it's been done before, but there's plenty of room for improvement, guys. All right, we're coming close to the end, and I have a confession to make. I oversold this episode a little bit, because I promised mummies, werewolves, and vampires. And this game does have all those things, but I didn't get to them. What you've been looking at is just the first third of the game. There's also Egypt and, of course, Transylvania. So why did I stop here at Egypt? Well, let me say, it's harder to make things spooky in the desert. It's doable, but as soon as I left New England, I lost that rich vibe I was getting and started to feel like any other MMO. I mean, look at this. This is what you're competing against, desert. Now, if the combat wasn't such a chore, I absolutely would have kept going. But to grind through this? No, I'm done. I did want to see Transylvania, but it's okay. I feel like I got my $12 worth. Besides, I found a wear cat and the chipmunk with the Nosferatu mask. So, two out of three. Okay, awards time. First award, you're going to see this one for every game that's relevant. Depends on a central server. 
I can't emphasize enough how much that impacts a game. Its life depends on it. Next award. I was originally going to give it a doesn't respect your time, but it actually really does when you're not in combat. So instead, Fatal Flaw. For my taste, the combat holds back everything else in this game. If this had a good combat system, this would easily be one of my all-time favorite games, and I would have played it to the end for sure. And the final award? Somebody crack this. You know how some people make Christmas wishes? Well, I'm more of a Halloween guy, so this is my Halloween wish. Now, I don't actually expect anyone to do this because I may as well be asking someone to learn Sumerian. This is just me hoping. I want to see this game live on after it shuts down because this game is going to die. You know how I know this? Because just a few months ago, Funcom put itself up for sale. They're on the rocks right now. I think that's why the park is using existing assets to save money. So everything you've been watching is up on the auction block. Its future has vultures circling it. After all, the buyer might not be interested in this game. It wouldn't be the first time something like this has happened. But before that does happen, I have another wish. Anybody who has a legal background out there, I want you to start sharpening your knives. You know why? Because of this stupid advertisement Funcom put up all over the place. Pay once, play forever. Forever. They're honestly saying that about this game? that requires a central server? Now, at first, I thought this was flat-out false advertising. On their Steam page, that's all it says. Play forever. That phrase doesn't leave a lot of ambiguity in my mind. What would they say in court? That forever really only means more than one month? But in their trailer video, you see terms of service apply. Well, their terms of service say they can do whatever they want and don't have to keep it running for any reason. Why is this okay? That would be like me saying, I will give everyone who watches this video free candy. You watch this video, I will mail you candy. Then in the end credits, I say I have no obligation to give you candy for any reason. So I lied, but it's okay because I said I was lying later. And I know Funcom is lying. I just can't prove it until it's too late. So maybe you legal types can find a way to get this some attention. It's not that I even want Funcom to suffer. I don't. I just want to see the whole industry and gamers start to pay attention to the practice of online-only games dying. And maybe legal action based on false advertising is one way for people to start noticing this. I mean, maybe they're right. I would love for Funcom to make me look like an idiot. And here they have an end-of-life plan, and in 20 years, you'll still be able to play this game. But I just don't see that kind of guarantee if they're putting the whole company up for sale. And the thing is, I think this is the most deserving MMO I've ever seen of wanting to play it single player. Remember how I said the Secret World is a special case? You can play 95% of this game solo, and it's still a pretty rich experience. That's what I did. I played every single quest on this first island because I loved it so much. This is a single player game handcuffed to an MMO. Fix the combat and this game is an unparalleled jewel. Also, you know what's nice about server emulators? Sometimes you can tweak the values so that you can play them the way you want to. That means my chainsaw build could theoretically happen someday. So my point is, for anyone who wants to try and crack it, don't wait. Let's help Funcom make good on their promise and emulate this before it dies. Don't let the secret world become the super secret world that no one can ever play again. That's it. Have a happy Halloween. And remember, support your local Templars. I killed the devil. I took his soul. I took his kingdom. I took his throne. I raised his army of the dead. Looked around before I said more zombies. More zombies. All we need is more zombies. More zombies. More zombies. Just keep it up with those zombies. Hey, I did it! I won! I found Carmen San Diego! No wonder nobody could find her! She's inside the world!